These are the types of high-flow oxygen devices available in SGH. First is the MR850 system that is used in the MICA and MICU. The next is the EVO2 system that can be found in the surgical high ds SICU and Ward 68. These are the physiological benefits of high-flow oxygen therapy. There is a more reliable delivery of FiO2 because there is less entrainment of room air due to the higher flow rates. The higher flow rates also wash out the dead space in the nasal pharynx and result in less carbon dioxide rebreathing. There is a small peak effect of about 2 to 5 cm of water, and this helps with alveolar recruitment. Finally, because the gas delivered is heated and humidified, this leads to improved mucociliary clearance. You can consider high-flow oxygen therapy in patients with type 1 respiratory failure and a PF ratio of less than 300. There should be no CO2 retention and no history of chronic respiratory failure. If your patient fulfills any of the mentioned exclusion criteria, they should not be started on high-flow oxygen therapy and you should consider intubation instead. For a patient who has been started on high-flow oxygen therapy, these are the signs of failure that you should look out for. First, are signs of persisting or worsening respiratory failure. Second, hemodynamic instability. And third, neurological deterioration. If your patient has been on high-flow oxygen therapy for more than 48 hours and does not show signs of improvement, consider if there is a need for intubation in this patient. It is important to remember that high-flow oxygen therapy is not an alternative to intubation. Prolonged high-flow oxygen use, despite failure of therapy, can delay intubation and increase mortality. It is therefore important to ensure that the patient selection is correct and to intubate early if your patient shows signs of failure. This is how you initiate high-flow oxygen therapy. Start with a flow rate of 60 liters and an FiO2 of 0.6. Adjust your FiO2 to target an SpO2 of more than 92%. It is important to monitor your patients closely after initiating high-flow oxygen therapy. If there are signs of failure, stop high-flow oxygen therapy immediately and intubate your patient. If your patient shows signs of improvement, you can wean the FiO2 gradually and maintain the SpO2 above 92%. The gas flow rate should only be decreased when the FiO2 has been decreased to below 0.5, maintaining the SpO2 above 92%. You can consider weaning to a regular oxygen delivery device when the flow rate is less than 40 liters, the FiO2 is less than 0.4, and the SpO2 is maintained above 90% on these settings. These are the parts of the nasal cannula. You have the nasal prongs, the fastener, the head strap, the tubing, and the pendant. First, remove the fastener and place the nasal prongs into your patient's nostril. Secure the fastener. and ensure that the feet is snug. Make sure that you can put two fingers in between the patient's face and the strap. When selecting the size of the nasal prong, ensure that the nasal prong occludes at least 50% of the patient's nostril. Next, we will wear the pendant for the patient. This ensures that the circuit does not pull on the nasal prongs. High flow oxygen therapy using the MR850 system. Uh, these are the requisites that you would need uh, for the high flow therapy. First, you have your different sizes of um, nasal cannulas. You have S, M, and L. Two pieces of alcohol swabs. Um, the high flow circuit, which consists of uh, a humidifier, a short tubing, 
and a long tubing that has two different sides. This side will be connected to the humidifier and this side will be connected to the patient. There are two different colored wires. One is a yellow heater wire and the other one is a blue temperature probe. Finally, you will need a 3 liter water for irrigation bag. This is how you set up the MR850 system. First, using the humidifier, load it in onto the humidifier plate, ensuring that there is a click and the humidifier is stable. Next, remove the covering and also the humidifier line. Next, take the short tubing that was in the circuit and connect one side to the air outlet and the other side to the humidifier. Using the long tubing, take the outlet side, connect it to the humidifier. Your patient side will be connected to the high flow nasal cannula. Next, take your 3 liter water bag and hang it on the pole and then we will remove the spike and spike the bag. After the bag is spiked, ensure that the water is flowing into the chamber. Next is the connection of the temperature probe. There is a small arrow on the temperature probe and it should line up with this arrow here. When you put it in, ensure that there is a click. Same goes for the yellow heater wire. Next, we'll be connecting the probe itself to the circuit. Ensure that you use the 3 pin end and connect it to the back of the patient's circuit. Now will be the connection of the temperature probe there are two ends. This is the chamber probe that goes to the end of the patient's circuit. And this is the airway probe that is closer to the patient. Before you insert the probes, ensure you clean it with an alcohol swab. Align the arrow on the chamber probe with this ridge. Similarly, for the airway probe that is closer to the patient, clean it with an alcohol swab, remove this cap, and insert it. This is how you would operate the heater plate. There is an on and off button, the mode button which consists of invasive ventilation and non-invasive ventilation, as well as a silence button. So first, press and hold till all the values light up. Silence the machine as required. Next, select the appropriate heating setting. How you would change from invasive to non-invasive would be to press and hold till the light stops flashing at the intended setting. There are two components that control the high flow oxygen therapy. First is the air blender and the gas flow meter. To select the FiO2 or oxygen concentration that you would like to deliver, you can use this dial here and line up this small arrow to the concentration that you would like to deliver. Controlling the gas flow would be by using the gas flow meter. Turn this knob here to determine the amount of gas that you would like to deliver. And how you ensure that is by looking at where the center of the ball is. High flow oxygen therapy using the AVO2 systems. These are the equipment that you would need. Nissal prongs, you have the S, M, and L. The AVO2 circuit together with the humidifier. The AVO circuit has two ends, 
this end is the machine end and this end is the patient end. You will need an oxygen tubing, flow oxygen flow meter, and a 3 litre water for irrigation bag. This is how you set up the AVO2. First, take the humidifier and ensure that it is in this setting. Load it onto the heater plate, push down and slide the humidifier in. There will be a click when the humidifier is loaded properly. Next is the connection of the patient tubing. This is the patient tubing. This side connects to the machine. There are two pins here that needs to line up with this prong here. Put it in. The blue flange has to be down to ensure that it is locked. Connect your oxygen tubing from the machine to the flow meter. When connecting to the machine, ensure that this is secured. Next, connect the other end of the oxygen tubing to your flow meter. Finally, you will need to spike your water bag. When you have spiked the water bag, ensure that the fluid is flowing and is filling up your heater humidifier. This is how you will turn on the AVO. First, press the power button till you hear the beep and that indicates that the machine is now turned on. The machine will take a moment to calibrate. The first display that would show would be on the disinfecting status. Only use the AVO if the disinfecting status is in the green zone. If it's in the yellow zone, do not use it and get a different machine. Once that display goes away, the machine will calibrate a second time. Once the machine is calibrated, there will be three numbers that are displayed. First would be the temperature, second gas flow, and finally oxygen concentration. For you to toggle between the three settings, there is an arrow button that is pointing to the right. Press it to select either temperature, gas flow, or oxygen concentration. To go to the main screen, press that arrow again. For instance, you would like to change the gas flow, and there is a padlock symbol showed there. This means that the settings are locked out. To unlock the settings, concurrently press both the up and down button together. When you press and hold, and the machine is now unlocked, the settings will be flashing, and you are able to adjust to the desired settings. Once you are done, press back the right arrow so that it locks the settings again. Press it one more time to go to the main screen. Oxygen concentration for the AVO2 is determined by the amount of oxygen that is bled into the AVO system. To increase the oxygen concentration, increase the amount of oxygen that you are bleeding in. The first component of cleaning would include using the water and the sponge stick. Place the water in the kidney dish. Open your sponge stick and wet the sponge stick. Next, clean the elbow from the top and from the side. Ensuring that you do not clean the left hand pot. Next, you will need to connect the red decontamination tube to the AVO2. This side has the pins. Ensure that it is lined up with the prongs. Once connected, ensure that the flange is locked. Next, this end connects to the left side and this blue cap to the right side. Once the red decontamination tube is connected, turn on the AVO again to start the decontamination process. 
the machine will auto calibrate and start decontamination on its own. When decontamination is in progress, there will be a countdown timer that is displayed on the display screen. Once the decontamination process is over, you will need to store the EVO2 in its approved storage cover. Please ensure that you write the date that the machine was decontaminated. Finally, cover your EVO2.